In this video, we're going to have a look at the epsilon delta definition of a limit, a very important notion introduced in the 19th century by Cauchy and Weierstrass. So we've seen this definition of the limit of a function as x approaches infinity, being in number l. We had a precise definition of what it means if we have a function like this, f of x, and we're interested in what happens to it as x approaches infinity, in other words, as x gets large. Here we see that it's kind of oscillating towards this value L. And what does that mean precisely? It means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a number M, such that if X is bigger than M, then F of X minus L in absolute value is less than epsilon. In other words, there's a band around L of, with epsilon in either direction. So that if we want to get our function's values in that band, we can do so by choosing a suitable point M, and beyond that, we'll be in the required band. Now, this M depends on the epsilon. So if we make a smaller epsilon, the band becomes narrower, and we typically have to go out further before we are assured that we're in that smaller band. All right, so that's well and good, but often we're interested in the situation of thinking about the behavior of a function f of x at some fixed point x equals a. In other words, not at infinity, but at a particular point, like x equals 3. So there's a corresponding definition of what it means for the limit of a function f of x as x approaches a to equal l. And this is a very important foundational definition for calculus because the notion of continuity is built on it. The notion of differentiability is also built on this. Okay, let's have a look at what it says. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a number delta greater than zero, typically a small number, such that if x is between a minus delta and a plus delta, in other words, close to a, and x happens not to equal a, then f of x minus l in absolute value is less than epsilon. You can say it in words that as x approaches a, f of x approaches l. And we're interpreting that to mean that if we want f of x to be within epsilon of l, we can guarantee that by requiring that x is within delta of a. But we note that the actual value of the function at a is not actually a part of the story. So this is the official epsilon delta definition of what it means. And now let's have a look at uh, how it translates in an example. So let's have a look at this definition in a special case. Here is a diagram of some unknown function f of x. And we happen to be interested in the function's behavior near the point x equals 3. So that's our value of a in this situation. What happens to f of x as x approaches 3? Well, it looks like the function's values are approaching 2. So we think this statement is true, that the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x equals 2. And here is the same definition that we had before, but now in the context of this particular example. This means that for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a number delta greater than 0, such that if x is between 3 minus delta and 3 plus delta, and x is not equal to 3, then f of x is within epsilon of 2, or the absolute value of f of x minus 2 is less than epsilon. So let's try to illustrate this uh, in this diagram. So basically we have to show that for every epsilon there is a delta. All right, let's do them sort of one epsilon at a time. Let's choose, say, uh, epsilon to uh, be equal to 1. Okay, so what would that mean? So that means we're going to look at a band here of width on either side uh, 1. Okay. So this is now L plus epsilon. And this is L minus epsilon. We want to ensure that the function is somewhere in this band as x approaches or is near 3. 
So how close to 3 do we have to insist that x is to ensure that the function's values are in this band? Well, if we can kind of drop some values here. This certainly suggests that if we choose something like uh, delta is maybe a half, but maybe that's just a little bit less than a half, so maybe we have to be a little bit uh, careful. Let's choose uh, delta equals, say, a third to be on the safe side. All right. So if we choose delta to equal a third, then a minus a third would be over here. So this is a minus delta. A plus a third would be over here. That's a plus delta. And now we can be very safely uh, saying that if x is within this interval, but not actually equal to 3, then the function's values are definitely in this range uh, between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. But suppose somebody else comes along and says, OK, I want to do something a little bit uh, fancier. Suppose we have a, uh, an epsilon of 0.5. That means we would be narrowing this band. OK, so let me draw it like that. So that would be the new epsilon, say L plus epsilon prime, the new epsilon, equal to 0.5. Then if we wanted to get within uh, that range, We'd have to tighten the band here. We'd have to tighten the interval around a equals 3 that we're choosing. So we'd be looking basically where this band cuts uh, here, and we'd be looking at something like this. And then we'd require a smaller interval to, uh, to be close to uh, a equals 3 to ensure that the function's values are within this smaller band. And it looks like, in this case, perhaps uh, delta equals uh, Maybe a fifth might work. So you might ask, well, isn't this going to be sort of an infinite amount of work? We have to choose all these deltas for all these epsilons. And in fact, there is an aspect of this that's somewhat problematic. In that there is a potential for having an infinite amount of work to do. But in practice, what we have is functions which are presented to us in terms of formulas. And then what we try to do is we try to find a a relationship, a formulaic relationship between the epsilon and the delta so that we can sort of do all the epsilons at once, uh, avoid, avoiding an infinite amount of work.